Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I don't know. Anyways, I'm Jewel and as you can tell by the title of this video, um, I'm going over every single book that I read in 2022. I'm sitting on my floor. I have all the books behind me. As you can see, like there's like piles of books right here um, and I'm going to stack them on my bed so then we can like have like the piles and they're in like they're in what is that word? There's like a word for the order that they're in. Um, it's just, it's not coming to my brain. Oh, chronological. It's in, chron they're in chronological order of like when I like read them. So like January through December of 2022, how I read them. Also, if the lighting starts to suck, blame my window um, and not me because I don't want to grab out my light. Okay, I'm going to stack all of my books on my bed and then we'll get started okay guys so i have all the books behind me as you can see there's like i'm not gonna count the piles i don't have the energy for that but there's a lot of them and um i guess we're just gonna get started uh if you want to see like my actual goodreads like reviews and like ratings on them go ahead and like just go in the like caption or bio or whatever it's called and i have my goodreads link and you can like follow me and see all of my ratings and stuff but i'm gonna be kind of like re-rating them based on like kind of like reviewing them now some of the books that i gave five stars i don't know if i would give them five stars now looking back on them but yeah i guess we're just we're just gonna see okay let's grab the first pile i also put like series together instead of like rating them all separately i'm just gonna like rate them as a whole because some like series i read through like multiple months um but i just like put them together so those aren't in like chronological order or whatever <laughs> first book is we were liars by e lockhart uh this book looking back on it i would give it like a three out of five stars uh it's like a mystery sort of like suspense thing and it deals like with mental health this one i'd probably give three stars as well this is like the prequel to this book but i read it after because it came out after these two books were good and if you're looking for like something that like will make your mind think and also just yourself be very confused because you don't really understand what's happening um these are those books the invisible life of Addie larue i also most of my hardcover books have like the sleeve off of them because i take it off while reading and then i just keep them in like a pile and forget to put them back on but this ah, <laughs> this book i rated one out of five stars this book was like very interesting i just don't sorry my dog is being so so strange what are you doing anyways the whole premise of the book like or like the whole idea of the book really was like strange and not my favorite and um i think it was honestly really great writing like what's her name the e schwab has a great like writing style but most of her books i've heard take on this sort of like darker aspect and i'm not like a huge person who likes that so if you do like like i guess like dark romance or like future classics or things like that this would be a good book but i don't know not my fave next i read the short second life of brie tanner by stephanie meyer this is a uh, extra Twilight book and I love the Twilight series. I think I would give this like 4.5 or 5 stars. Anytime that I read like a Twilight book or like I reread one, I just take it as an excuse to rewatch the movies. And um, yeah, so I loved being able to like rewatch all of the movies after reading this. Next, I read Into the Forest by Jean Hegelin? Hegeland? I don't know. This is a thriller. There's also a movie on it. I didn't watch the movie because basically halfway through reading this I didn't realize that it was gonna be like I don't know I thought it was just gonna be a thriller but it's, there's also like some horror aspects in it so um I just kind of dnf'd it or did not finish it but it does seem like such a cool idea for a book if you do like horrors or like really intense thrillers um you should probably read it but not for me <laughs> probably read this like I don't know based on what I read like a 2.5 fable and namesake by adrian young these were the books that really got me into like reading more than 10 books a month um because i was reading like probably five to ten every month before this and then i was like okay like all after reading these i literally just got into like 
reading so fast and like it just really i don't know really inspired me to read more for some reason but both these were obviously five stars i convinced my sister to even read them uh and she loved them and she like has recently became like more of a reader which is really cool after reading these if you're looking for a good like duology to get yourself into reading i would definitely recommend these next i have milk and honey by ruby carr and this is a poetry book maybe just like ruby carr's writing isn't my favorite like i gave this book three out of five stars i think and i think i stick by that it's like i don't know same with The Sun and Her Flowers, which I also read, um, like, right after this one, because I, like, semi-liked this one, but then I read this one, and I was like, what? <laughs> and I didn't love this one. I think I gave it, like, two stars, but I might give it one. I don't like re reading poetry because poetry is so individualistic. Is that the word? I don't know, but yeah, that's all I'm gonna say on these. If you want, like, freestyle poetry, I'd recommend these. Next, we have the Cruel Prince Trilogy. These books were so good. Um, I'd give the overall series probably, like, a 4 to 4.5. I think the second book was my favorite. And then the third book was my least favorite. You guys should just read, like, the synopsis. Like, just pause it and read the synopsis. Um, I read Bridge to Terabithia because I saw it and I'd never read it and I wanted to watch the movie again even though like it makes me cry but um I think like four stars then I read Call Me When You Get This by Brianna Reed and this book was so good five out of five stars this is like one of my favorite poetry books it's just like it's very authentic and I just loved reading about the experiences in this then I read It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover Okay, so basically, originally, I gave this book five stars, but I don't know, because this book is really over-romanticized, but this book was, like, really described as a romance, and it really, there's no romance really in it. It deals with, like, a lot of issues, so, like, check trigger warnings and stuff, but I don't know. Colin Hoover... It's really difficult because I like her books because they're like easy to get through and there's like always like some sort of like good story or something but I also don't love her books so I'm like I don't know. Next I read The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This book was so good but like not my favorite like I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. I think it's just Taylor Jenkins Reid's like her writing style. I love it. But this book, I don't know if I loved, like, the actual, like, story. But it was so well done, where I'm like, I want to love it. But <laughs> I rated it probably, like, a four, five stars. I don't know, 3.5 to four stars for sure. I also wrote post-it notes because some books I don't have because people are either borrowing them from me or I read them, like, I borrowed them from a friend and then I didn't buy my own copy, so I don't have a copy with me. But I also read Everybody Always by Bob Goff and Love Lives Here by Mariah Goff. Those books were both, I think, five stars and they were both so good. Like, they're like Christian books on, mo mostly on like love and like living a life, just like a good life. I read Conceal Don't Feel oh, by Jen Kalanita. I I'm so bad with all their names, but I gave this book a three out of five stars. Um, I honestly just read it because I saw it and I love Frozen. So I was like, you know, this will be like a good, easy read in between um, other reads. Next, I read The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes by Susanna Collins. This is a book, like a prequel to The Hunger Games, and it's about President Snow and kind of like his story of like how he became a villain um and it's actually really interesting they're making a movie on it looking back on it i would rate it higher than what i rated it when i first read it i'd rate it probably like a four stars now next i read the hate you give by angie thomas and wow this was like such a like surprising five star read 
it's just like an it's a learning experience to read this book and also watch the movie um and it really like opens your eyes to just like learning about something that you might not have a lot of information on before next the summer i turned pretty uh trilogy tri i can't say that word so i'm just gonna say series i would overall give this series like a 3.5 because the first book i loved second book was okay well second book i don't know i can't i can't really recall anything that happens i just remember like liking it and liking the summer vibes and everything but second book i think made me cry so like that's good but it's not really good so i'm like i don't know i have just such conflicted feelings and i really like the show that came out about this series but like the books I'm I'm just conflicted about and that's all I'm gonna say because I can't think of anything else that goes along with this series <laughs> then I read my favorite like one of my favorite series ever it's okay these are out of order that's gonna bug me but <laughs> it's the Shatter Me series um by Tahara Moffey again I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing her name wrong um but these books were so good they literally it's basically like a dystopian romance and it's like just this 17 year old girl who has like powers like takes over the government but like there's also this other guy and like they take over the government together but like there's also like i don't even know how to describe it but it's <laughs> it's so good um i think almost all of them were five stars i think all of them were five stars except this one because this one I never rated because it was kind of a disappointment and also I didn't know that it was actually the last book like I thought there was another book after this so when everything like started to come together I was like what's happening like there has to be like something that's gonna like go wrong and so it kind of like I mean that's my fault not the book's fault but like I wish that there was another book. The Good Girls Guide to Murder series and these books the first book I gave 4.5 stars, second book 5 stars, third book 4 stars, 3.5, I don't know, the ending really gets me and just so confused by it, but I don't have the first book with me because my mom is currently reading it. I literally, I've gotten everyone in my family to start reading and I love it. Then I read the selection series. Um, and then these two books that like are kind of like extra books or like an extra duology from the selection series but the selection series i'd overall probably give like a four stars like i really like them they're a young adult dystopian romance and they're really good but like you can't take them too seriously because like the main character's name is america and that alone just like at first was like okay Mm, I don't know if I love her name and I like just feel like it's an interesting name I'm sorry I should not judge her name and then these two books I probably give like 3.5 four stars um they were also pretty good I read Broken Flowers by Robert M. Drake and also I haven't been saying all the authors I really try to but sometimes I forget so you can like just kind of search them up again I don't love rating poetry just because like I feel like poetry is like a way for like people to like get their feelings out and then they like publish it because like they can and I feel like judging it is kind of like rude it's like when I judge memoirs like I don't want to be like oh that was so boring like that's literally your life and like your feelings or whatever so I'd say I give this three stars it wasn't like bad I'll just say like I didn't connect to it as well as like some other poetry books. Next I read The Legend series by Mary Lou. This series as a whole I would give 2.5 stars. I honestly did not like it and I'm sorry if anyone did but like I was so bored. Daughter of the Pirate King and Daughter of the Siren Queen by Trisha Levin Le Levenseller. These books were so good. Five out of five for both of them they like they're the same sort of vibe and like idea as fable by adrian young 
and I just I love them. Next I read Love and Gelato, Love and Luck, and Love and Olives. These aren't really a series but I put them together because I kind of group them as a series because they're all like in the same universe sort of. These are all romances based in different places like this is in Italy, this is in Ireland, and then this is in Greece. This one I give 5 out of 5. <laughs> this one I give 2.5 to 3 stars just because I like the ending but like it was a little bit boring in between and then this book I'd give five out of five I absolutely love this book I was so sad when it was over next I read Be Treed by Emily Henry and this book I would give four stars it was so cute I read it in one sitting then I read the Harry Potter series but there's so many books I'm even missing one of the books because um I don't own it yet the series as a whole I'd give four stars I really enjoyed it. Um, I listened to most of them on audiobook because it was just easier to follow along with. But leaving in Narnia, but like this is like a guide like through the Bible, but of like things that C.S. Lewis like put in the book that kind of like correlate to things in the Bible. This book I would give like probably like a four stars. We have November 9th by Colleen Hoover. Originally I gave this book 4.5 stars I think. Um, Looking back, I'd give it like a three stars. Uh, again, Colleen Hoover, just like her books, like I really like them, but I also don't really like them. So I'm like conflicted. I read the selected poems of Emily Dickinson and this I th gave five stars. Um, like you can literally see how much I annotated it, like so much. Um, I literally love like just everything. I read The Secret History. Currently Ryan, my friend, he's borrowing this book so I don't have it with me but I read that and five out of five. Literally so good. Um, do like search up first of all trigger warnings and <laughs> second of all like the, I mean I guess read it and then search up the true meaning behind the book because the meaning and like how people perceive it is like kind of different sometimes and like a lot of people think of it as just like dark academia um when in reality it's not so yeah the percy jackson series i finally read it um i like wouldn't say that i'm huge on greek mythology currently i'm reading the lost hero series and i'm on the last book and i like for some reason i'm starting to like greek mythology a little more which is kind of cool um these books are just like so interesting. The whole entire series I'd probably give like a four stars. Next we have The Fault in Our Stars by John Green. Most people know about this book and this movie. Um, 3.5 stars I'd say. I read Inside Out, just another like cute filler book um, and I enjoyed it see like three stars 2.5 five feet apart by well why is there three authors um there's three authors of this book and i gave this book I, I would give this book four stars it was honestly a lot better than i was expecting and i did cry the inheritance games trilogy I, again i can't say that word for the life of me so the inheritance games series um by jennifer lynn barnes and these books are so good. If you're looking for a young adult mystery with a subplot of romance, um, read these immediately. Even if you don't like like romance, just immediately read these. These are so, so good. And there's just so much going on. <laughs> I love them. The Last Thing He Told Me by Laura Dave. And this is just like a cool mystery. It's kind of just like it's like a filler book. I wouldn't say it's my favorite. Probably like three stars. Love in Other Words by Christina Lauren. I really liked it. It like was so cute and like kind of sad but like it like all worked together so it was good. One of Us is Lying by Karen M. McManus. This is a young adult mystery but it like it's a lot different than like a lot of the other mysteries I guess. Um, it's a murder mystery also but it's like about teenagers. This book definitely gives like Breakfast Club vibes. If you have watched that movie, then you know what I'm talking about. If not, watch the movie and then read this book and you'll know what I'm saying. I also read the Swan Song. I don't know who it's, I can't remember who it was by, but I read it for school, so. I don't even wanna talk about this book. It was so boring. 
<laughs> it's Paper Towns by John Green. Um, I've literally said this statement so many times, but I read this book so then I could watch the movie because I had watched the movie before and I like sort of enjoyed it. But then after reading this book, I didn't want to watch the movie anymore. House of Hollow by Crystal Sutherland. This book is so underrated. It's literally the best in the entire world. Like, I don't even know how to describe it. If you like sort of, I don't even, fiction, mystery, suspense. It says like it's sort of horror, but there's no like horror in it. But next I read Dance of Thieves. Uh, which is a duology. I haven't read the second book yet, but the first book was- okay, the first book I gave 4.5 stars. But anytime I think back on that book, I think of how boring it was and like how I don't want to start the second book even though I have it. But it's like I said that it was really good at, right after I finished the book, so maybe my memory is like broken and I actually did enjoy the book. So I really want to start the second book and see if like maybe I was just like wrong. Next is Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This book was really good. Um, I can't remember much about it so I'd give it like a four stars but it was like I remember the key details of it which is like fine but I kind of want to reread it because I remember like really loving it as I was reading it. But again, I just really like Taylor Jenkins read like her writing style. It's just so cool. And it's historical fiction. Like I love historical fiction. Next I read Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. And this was five out of five stars. It's only dialogue. It's only dialogue. And it's like you find out by the end of the story how you're getting this dialogue. Guys, this is such a good book. I would recommend this to basically anyone. Ugly Love by Colleen Hoover. One star. If you know anything about this book, you know why I rate it one star. If you don't, then do yourself a favor and don't even try to understand what is happening. Tell Me Three Things, which was just like a cute little like high school romance. Um, it's like kind of like there's like a small mystery going on but it's really like it's just like a cute little book i gave it three stars the summer of broken rules 4.5 stars literally one of my favorite like summer romances it's by k.l walther and it's like it's not even like fully a romance i feel like i feel like so much more happens in this book but like it's just so so good people we meet on vacation by emily henry and um i give this like a three out of five stars next i read light lark um five out of five stars if you want to see my reading vlog on this just go ahead and click here it's i got like an arc of it and um i've also met the author so go watch that video here too and um yeah love next is a study in charlotte by Brittany. Calvo, Cavalero? Like, this is like a Sherlock Holmes, like, not retelling, but it's like Sherlock Holmes, like, great great niece or granddaughter or something. And she's inherited his genius and she's basically like trying to be him. And then there's like Watson's great 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 grandson or something. And they all are like, they're like solve a murder mystery and um, then like like each other and I don't know this wasn't my favorite I just didn't like the writing it makes me really sad <laughs> book lovers by Emily Henry I really enjoyed this book probably five out of five yeah probably five out of five it was just like a cool small town romance and it really like it reminded me of Gilmore Girls The Love Hypothesis by Ali Hazelwood this book was so good it's like a science romance but this was five out of five stars i don't know if i already said that <laughs> every last word by tamara ireland stone this book was so unexpectedly like good like i gave it a five out of five stars it had like a plot twist that i just was not even ready for it's like a coming of age story and like in high school and it deals with mental health like it was just 
so good the cheat sheet by sarah adams this was just such a cute pure like romance and it was just so it was just like such a cute like rom-com sort of romance it's kind of a funny story by ned the zinni this book was like so interesting it talks about this guy in a mental institution but it's fiction but it's written by someone who's actually been in like a psych ward um or it's like a guy in a psych ward or something like that he deals with like a lot of like mental health issues and um he just kind of is in high school you like depressed and just trying to figure out life and it's like it's kind of a sad story but like <laughs> it's kind of a funny story ha 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 wasn't that like really funny you guys better have laughed at that joke i would give it like 2.5 maybe three stars probably three stars the masterpiece by francine rivers i like i always forget how good francine rivers writing is and like how she just like can make a story so like amazing this is christian fiction with romance then i read the book thief by marcus zuza a lot of people have to read this for school i didn't have to read it for school but my friend did so i like read it with her for fun and it is just so crazy the movie i watched at, at like 1 a.m and i thought i would just start it for like 15 minutes to like go to sleep i don't know why i thought that this book is so sad and the movie i was bawling my eyes out and like just in tears <laughs> five out of five stars i'd say like maybe 4.5 i kind of talked about this already but i read the lost hero series books one through four um and the books honestly i could go grab they're in my closet but i do not have the energy to pull them out i would give the series a five out of five stars so far i love them <laughs> reminders of him by colleen hoover this is one of the only colleen hoover books that i've read so far that like i have <laughs> that I haven't found like completely strange but also honestly this book is completely strange I'm confused by what happens in this book by all of Colleen Hoover's books like I don't know The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren this book makes me upset for so many reasons okay so basically this is a romance and it's like kind of like supposed to be like a summery cute romance but the main guy I think his name is Ethan yeah Ethan he like gaslights olive who's like the main girl and like he's just he's not my favorite and um yeah for that reason this book is like 2.53 stars 28 summers by ellen hildebrand i would give this book 4.5 stars maybe five stars it was so good every summer after by carly fortune this book i originally rated five stars and i even put this in like a five star video but looking back on it now, I would give it like 4.5 stars or 4 stars because of the thing that happens at the end of the book, which if you've read, you know, it's just so unnecessary and strange. So I'm just like, not my fave. <laughs> Today, Tonight, Tomorrow by Rachel Lynn Solomon. This is such a cool like high school romance and it happens like all in one night. I don't know I, this was five out of five stars i loved this romance book and it was just like such a cute like high school romance to kill a kingdom by alexandra christo this is like kind of like a fantasy almost like an ursula retelling but not really at all um it's about sirens i don't know it's not my favorite honestly i was expecting it to like give me more and it just never did and it was just kind of boring. Better Than the Movies by Lynn Painter. This was supposed to be like a cute high school romance. Um, it's basically like this girl is like obsessed with rom-coms and so like it's like supposed to be like a rom-com romance. Um, but I didn't love it. I'd give it like three stars. It just kind of bored me. I wasn't like rooting for the relationship the main character kind of annoyed me she was a little too like i don't know like 
I'm not like other girls sort of vibe and I was just like, okay, but you kind of are. For better or worse, I'd give this one like, I gave it like 4.5 right after reading it because I really like loved the banter and thought it was like really funny. But looking back on it, I'd give it like a 3.5. Flying Solo by Ralph Fletcher. This is just like a cute kids book, but it's was again like just like a filler book but it was like funny and i really enjoyed this it's like 100 pages but it was funny and just i liked reading it <laughs> then i read my first ever graphic novel which of course if i'm gonna read a graphic novel it has to be twilight um there's apparently several volumes i thought that graphic novels were all just in one book but i guess it makes sense that there's like several volumes um i didn't i don't know how i feel about this I'm not just- I don't think I like graphic novels, so I'm not gonna rate it. I'm, I'll rate it like a 3 out of 5 stars. I read The Hobbit, and I gave that 5 out of 5 stars, and then I read The Lord of the Rings, books 1 and 2, and I gave those each 3 out of 5 stars. Um, I actually listened to the second one on audiobook because I couldn't focus during the first one. Then I read Punk 57 by Penelope Douglas, and... I don't want to say anything on this book. It, I literally hated it. It was one star. Why do I have so many books that I hate? I sound like- I feel like I sound like such a negative person in this video. I swear, I don't hate every book I read. It's just some of these that are getting hyped up and I like- I'm like, oh, I'm so excited. And then I read it and I'm like, this is terrible, what? All the Bright Places by Jennifer Niven? This book is good probably three out of five stars i don't know this one i was like everyone said it was so sad and it was like sad and i think i might have cried but i feel like i just cried because i knew it was sad but not because it was actually sad like not because i actually was feeling sad i also read this book but i read this like i feel like i read this in february or march but it didn't it wasn't showing up on my goodreads so i like didn't know where it was like getting put um and this one I would give a four out of five stars 3.5 um my sister's husband got this for me and um for Christmas in 2021 and then I read it in like I think January or February of 2022 I do remember really enjoying it and finding it funny and very interesting it was such a good like adventure book and yeah I would recommend this then I read Shakespeare on Leadership, which was basically just like a bunch of things from a bunch of different Shakespeare books that like talked about leadership. I read The Paris Apartment by Lucy Foley and um, this is a mystery book. I do remember being like very involved and very like in this book. So I would recommend this if you're looking for a mystery and it's like not scary, it's just like a good book. Oh, I read the first one of the, um, a series of unfortunate events, like, like, books. There's, like, 16 of them, so I read the first one. And I've watched the show, but it's been, like, since I was, like, really young, so I want to read all the books and then rewatch the show. <laughs> Romeo and Juliet by William Shakespeare. I had to read this for school last semester, and... I don't really know what to read this. Next, I have The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. This book was five out of five stars. It's a classic. It's so good. Yeah, if you've read this, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's just such a good classic, and I want to reread it already. <laughs> We're on to the last two books. Like, I'm sad now. We have Verity by Colleen Hoover, and this was like... Okay, this is probably my favorite Colleen Hoover book, I guess. It's um thriller but it like it was very like trippy and it was like by the end of the book it made you like not believe anyone so you're like very confused um but i would recommend this if you're looking for a thriller and last but definitely not least the perks of being a wallflower by stefan chbosky i'm sorry i don't i'm so like when i read names it just doesn't cooperate with my brain this was five out of five stars one of my favorite movies for sure i want to reread it <laughs> this makes me like anytime i look at books that i've read i'm like i want to reread that <laughs> okay guys 
thanks for watching um like literally i have all of these books on my floor now and i'm so glad so happy for that but i have to put them all away and that's sad and i have to edit this video that you're watching right now like subscribe do all the youtube stuff there's like stuff that you can click on i don't even know um i'm exhausted so i'm gonna text my friends because they texted me a lot while i was filming this and i didn't have a chance to respond so we're gonna do that and then i'm gonna go have a great day and you should too thanks or bye <laughs>